Nate the Great Talks Turkey. Nate the Great Talks Turkey with help from Olivia Sharp by Marjorie Weinman Charmott and Mitchell Charmott illustrated by Jody Wheeler in the style of Mark Samant. Published by Random House. Copyright 2006. Chapter 1 My name is Nate the Great. I am a detective. My dog, Sludge, is a detective, too. This morning we did not have any cases to solve. We were eating breakfast and listening to the radio. I was eating pancakes. Sludge was eating a bone. It was a nice, quiet, tasty morning. There is not much news on the radio, I said to Sludge. Sludge kept crunching his bone. Suddenly I heard something. A giant turkey is sitting on a car in a supermarket parking lot. The people inside the car cannot get out. There is panic in the parking lot. Do you believe that? I asked Sludge. Sludge looked puzzled. I heard a knock at the door. I got up and opened it. Claude was there. Claude is always losing things. He is one of my best clients. I found something, he said. You found something? I asked. Yes. Tell me about it, I said. Well, Claude said, I was walking in Deering Woods about three hours ago, and I found this really big turkey. Big feathers, big feet, big everything. He started to follow me, but then I lost him. So, can you find him? Actually, I believe I can, I said. But why would you want him? Well, that turkey made me think about Thanksgiving Day. Thanksgiving Day is terrific. Perhaps the turkey has a different opinion about that day, I said. Besides, this is summer. Thanksgiving Day is months away. I still want that turkey, Claude said. I found him, and I am very proud of that. I, Nate the Great, understand. Good work. Thank you. Claude said. Now, how can you help me? I, Nate the Great, say that your really big turkey is in a supermarket parking lot. You are a great detective, Claude said. Sludge looked at me. He knew I was not a great detective in this case. Sludge and I heard about the turkey on the radio, I said. The radio? Claude said. I found a famous turkey? I am even better at finding than I thought. My radio is still on, I said. Let's listen. Claude? Sludge and I stood by the radio. 
soon we heard. The giant turkey has fled the supermarket parking lot. Be on the lookout. Do not approach him. He is feathered and dangerous. Claude groaned. He's gone again. Yes, I said, and he could be angry or scared. You must be careful. Oh, no, Claude said. He's a really nice turkey. A nice, nice turkey. Hmm, I said. What makes him nice three times over? Well, I was eating popcorn in the woods, Claude said. And I dropped some along the way, and he ate it. Then he started to follow me. I gave him more popcorn until I didn't have any left. He still followed me. That's when I knew he liked me. But later on, when I turned around, he was gone. Will you take the case? I can't, I said. Nate the Great does not take cases that everybody else is on. The whole town must be looking for this turkey. Oh, Claude said. He seemed sad. Sludge put his head on my lap. He looked sad, too. I patted Sludge. You want this case, don't you? I said. Sludge wagged his tail. Chapter 2 Sludge is a sniffer, Claude said. I could use a sniffer on this case. A detective sniffer. Claude pulled a white feather from his pocket. He put it near Sludge's nose. I picked this off the ground in the woods, he said. It must have come from the turkey. Sludge sniffed the feather. I, Nate the Great, was thinking. This was Sludge's chance to work alone and he wanted this case. You can do it, I said to Sludge. You are a dog. You are a detective. You are great at being both. Sludge led Claude out the door. Chapter 3 The telephone rang. This quiet day was no longer quiet. I picked up the receiver. I hope you are on this case, a voice said. It was my cousin Olivia Sharp. Olivia lives in San Francisco. She is also a detective. She has a chauffeur named Willie. I know him well. She has an owl named Hoot. I know her well, too. Unfortunately, Olivia loves birds, but she couldn't be calling about the turkey. I am calling about the turkey, Olivia said. What? I said. You heard about him in San Francisco? Actually, the news is national. I am on my way to help. But, I said. Olivia hung up. Olivia does not like to hear buts. She was determined to come. What was she up to? Olivia usually has more cases than she can handle. Why would she take time out for a turkey? Chapter 4 Let me introduce myself. My name 
is Olivia Sharp. My friends call me Olivia. My enemies call me Liver. I have an owl named Hoot. We live in a penthouse at the top of Pacific Heights in San Francisco with my chauffeur Willie, my housekeeper Mrs. Fridge Flake, and my folks. But my folks aren't home much. Right now they're on vacation on Nantucket Island. And me? I was sitting in my office, looking out the window, watching the fog as it hung over Alcatraz and the bay. I was waiting for business. I'm a special kind of detective. An agent for secrets. But business was slow. I'd hit a dry spell. I was bored. Maybe it was time for me to take a vacation. I called Willie. Pack your bags. Order the plane. We're going to join my folks in Nantucket. I hung up. My folks own a private airplane. Willie is a pilot as well as a chauffeur. I walked out of my room and closed the door behind me. Goodbye, slow business. Hello, fast vacation, I said. Mrs. Fridge Flake helped me pack my bags. Willie brought the limo around. Everything is set to go, Miss Olivia, he said. I tossed my boa around my neck and got into the limo. We were off. Chapter 5 We were in the air. I watched the clouds go by and ate a watercress sandwich that Mrs. Fridge Flake had packed. There wasn't much to do. I got tired of looking at clouds. I turned on the TV. I kept changing channels. Dull, dumb, ho-hum. I switched to the news. There was a picture of a giant turkey sitting on top of a car in a supermarket parking lot. I turned up the sound on the television. I heard the word panic. I heard, catch him, catch him. I sighed. Poor bird. This turkey was having a worse day than I was. Suddenly, he disappeared from the screen. If I were that turkey, I wouldn't stick around either. What city was this happening in? I had missed that part of the story. I looked closer at the screen. I kept looking. I knew that parking lot. I knew that supermarket. And suddenly, I was back in business. I made a quick phone call. Then I went up to Willie. Change of plans, I said. Back to San Francisco, boss? He asked. Not exactly, Willie. I was just talking to Nate the Great. I think we should drop in on him. He needs help with a turkey. Chapter 6 I, Nate the Great, heard a knock at my door. What now? Sludge and Claude were off on a case. Olivia was on her way from San Francisco. Meanwhile, I was having a good, quiet time again. I was reading a book. There was no more knocking. There was pounding. Somebody out there was in a hurry. I opened the door. Olivia was standing there.
You're here? I said. Where did you call me from? Olivia stepped inside. I was up in the air, she said. Willie and I flew into town. We hired a limo, and he's out there cruising for clues. Now let's talk turkey. Sludge is looking for the turkey, I said. And Sludge will find the turkey. I believe in him. Olivia crossed her arms. Now listen carefully, she said. Birds are my specialty. That poor turkey is in trouble. I need a list of your friends for my turkey search team. Wait a minute, I said. My friends are not detectives. Names, please, she said. I shrugged. Well, there's Oliver next door. He always follows people. And he can show you where to find Rosamond and Annie. There's also Claude, but he's already looking for the turkey with Sludge. Where are they looking? In Deering Woods. That is where Claude first saw the turkey. He saw the turkey? Fantastic! Olivia tossed her boa into the air. She wears that boa just about everywhere. Not so fantastic, I said. Claude also lost the turkey. And I will find it again, she said. And she was out the door. Chapter 7 The minute I left Nate's house, someone started to walk behind me. I knew who it was. Oliver, the follower. I turned around. Nobody follows Olivia Sharp, I said. I follow everybody, Oliver said. How about a turkey? I asked. I need a search team to help me look for a turkey. You mean that famous turkey? I can't join the team. I haven't seen him, so I can't follow him. I would like to follow you, I said, to Rosamond's house. Follow me? People just don't do that around here. I flung my boa around Oliver. Let me be the first. Actually, you're the second or third, Oliver said. He started walking. I started following. Oliver led me to Rosamond's house. Chapter 8 Oliver and I were standing in front of Rosamond's house. I was trying to figure out exactly what I was looking at. I saw a sign in the front yard, Rent a pet, a nickel, an hour. I saw a table. A girl was sitting behind it. She looked very strange. Four cats were crawling over the table. They looked strange, too. That's Rosamond, Oliver said, and her four cats. Oliver walked away. I walked up to the table. Hello. I said, I'm Olivia Sharp, and I'm forming a search team to look in Deering Woods for the famous turkey. I would like you to join. Rosamond pointed to her cats. I am running a business here, she said. I can't leave. In fact, I have even more pets to rent. 
They are not here right now. Meanwhile, would you like to rent one of my cats? Plain Hex. Little Hex? Big Hex? Or Super Hex? Choose. They are all fine choices. I'm a bird person, I said. Birds? Rosamond said. I'll be renting birds. I started to fidget with my boa. I had traveled hundreds of miles for this. I had to rethink my situation. Oliver didn't want to join the team. Rosamond didn't want to join the team. And right now, I had no team to join. Can you tell me where Annie lives? I asked. You won't have to go there, Rosamond said. I see her and her dog Fang down the street. Annie and Fang go everywhere together. I flicked my boa at Rosamond and left. Chapter 9 I walked up to Annie and Fang. Hello, Annie said. You must be Nate the Great's cousin from San Francisco. How did you know? Well, he told me about the boa. I haven't seen any others around here. Good observation. Olivia Sharp here. I'm Annie. And this is my dog, Fang. I looked at Fang. He was big. He had lots of soft fur, and his eyes were warm and friendly. What a pretty dog, I said. Suddenly, Annie got excited. Oh, you really think so? I always knew it, but nobody else ever said it until now. Annie knelt down close to Fang. Thank Olivia and give her a big smile. Fang opened his mouth. I immediately knew that he was perfectly named. I had never seen Fangs like his before. Awesome! Outstanding! breathtaking, and totally unfit for a turkey hunt. I said, I must be going. I see my limo coming to pick me up. I patted Fang on his head, a good three inches from his fangs. Then I left and got into the limo. No turkey team, I said to Willie. Drive on! Chapter 10 I, Nate the Great, was eating more pancakes. I missed having Sludge sitting by me eating a bone. I had to think. Sludge was off trying to help Claude find a turkey. Olivia was off trying to find the turkey, too. I, Nate the Great, was just sitting here. Waiting and waiting. I do not like to wait, but this wasn't my case. Still, I was curious. What was going on with that turkey? I finished eating and turned on the radio. There was no turkey news. I turned on the television. A reporter was speaking. Where is this wild, weird turkey? Nobody knows. Could this be the turkey who once ate the entire ant population and one half of the corn supply of Portland, Maine? Hmm. I, Nate the Great, had never heard of a turkey who fit that description.
but I kept watching the screen. A picture of the turkey flashed on. He was moving fast. And now, so was I. That turkey had given me a clue. Now I knew I couldn't sit and wait. I had to find Olivia. Chapter 11 I wrote a note to my mother. Dear Mother, I am not on a case. Sludge is. Olivia Sharp is. They are on a turkey hunt I do not want to go on. But now I have to go on my own hunt. I, Nate the Great, can't wait. I will be back. Love, Nate the Great. I rushed out. I saw Oliver in front of his house. Have you seen my cousin, Olivia? I asked. Oliver nodded. Yes, he said. She asked me to be on her turkey team, but I can't. I showed her where Rosamond lives. Then I went home. I must go to Rosamond's house, I said. I must follow you, Oliver said. Chapter 12 I saw Rosamond sitting behind a table in her front yard. There was a sign on the table. Rent a pet, a nickel, an hour. Rosamond's cats were crawling all over the table. I could see that Rosamond was in business again. I wanted to walk away, but I walked up to her. You have a new business, I see. Yes, Rosamond said. Pets need a change now and then. Sort of a vacation. Just like the rest of us. So I rent them out by the hour. There is not much to choose from, I said. Only your cats. Rosamond held up a piece of paper. Well, I'm also taking orders. Here is a list of all the creatures I can supply. I, Nate the Great, did not want to read Rosamond's list. What I want to know, I said, is where I can find Olivia Sharp. Oh, her, Rosamond said. She left without renting even one of my hexes. Then I saw her talking to Annie and Fang. And then she went off in a limo. This was not good news. Olivia was cruising the streets looking for the turkey. I would never be able to catch up with her. Is there anything else you can tell me? I asked Rosamond. Well, she wanted me to be on some kind of turkey team. But I am busy here. Anyway, I already have a turkey on my list. Rosamond pushed the piece of paper into my hand. It's in alphabetical order. I, Nate the Great, know that sometimes detectives have to do strange things. This was one of those times. I had to look down at Rosamond's list. It was alphabetical, all right. I found turkey between scorpion and vulture. I, Nate the Great, was getting nowhere.
Are you telling me that you can get these creatures? Rosamond sighed. Well, the vulture might be a problem. Where would you get a turkey? There are no turkey farms around here. Rosamond smiled. Her smiles are strange. Everything about her is strange. Well, I asked Annie's brother Harry, who asked Esmeralda, who asked Finley, who asked Pip, who asked a friend who owns a turkey that was given to her by her uncle. What does the turkey look like? He's big and plump and white and cheery, Rosamond grinned. I plan to charge ten cents an hour for him. So you've seen this turkey? I asked. Not exactly, Rosamond said. But Pip's friend told Pip, who told Finley, who told Esmeralda, who told Harry, who told me that that's what the turkey looks like. So where is this turkey? I asked. Rosamond shrugged. He's very late. He should have been here by now. The anteater is late, too. The anteater? Top of the list, Rosamond said. Do you know who owns this turkey? I asked. No, but I can ask Harry, who can ask... Never mind, I said. Do you know where this turkey lives? Yes, near Deering Woods, in a house on Kenwood Street. I don't know which house. Thank you for the information, I said. I walked away. Wait, Rosamond called. Is sludge available for rent? I walked faster. Chapter 13 I, Nate the Great, was now on a case. Whether I wanted to be or not, I knew things, but not enough. I knew that Kenwood Street was a long, long street. I knew that I did not want to go to every house on it. I walked to Lowell's Feed and Pet Supply Store. I went up to a man behind a counter. Do you sell turkey food to a house on Kenwood Street? Turkey food? The man said. Everybody's talking turkey today. Right. But I'm asking about a specific house. Oh, that's private information, the man said. I can't tell you that. I, Nate the Great, needed that information. How could I get it? I smiled. Your turkey food must be very good, I said, because that Kenwood Street turkey is big and plump and white and cheery. The man smiled. Why, yes, you noticed. We have wonderful food here. Well, I guess it's easy to forget a street address and hard to forget what good food we sell. My friend, the address is 58 Kenwood Street. Thank you, I said. Thank you, the man said. I walked out of the store. Sometimes a detective can get information just by giving information. I hurried over to 58 Kenwood Street. Should I go up and knock on the door? No. 
I walked around to this side of the house. Would I get a surprise? No. I saw just what I thought I would see. A large white turkey inside a wire fence. And outside, looking very happy, was Sludge. Chapter 14 I was so glad to be back in the limo, cool and comfortable. Nobody following me, no cats for rent, and no fangs. All in all, really, really cool. But I had no search team, and Willie had bad news. Well, actually, Willie had no news. Whoever said that no news is good news didn't know what he was talking about. Willie looked glum. I drove around, Miss Olivia, he said, but I didn't see anything that looked like a turkey. I leaned back in the soft leather seat. Not to worry, Willie, I said. We don't give up easily. So where to, boss? Into the woods on foot, Willie. You and I will go up and down every path. Sounds like a plan, Willie said. Willie drove down a few streets and around a corner, and parked. We went into Deering Woods. There were paths, and paths, and paths. So many choices! Ugh! It would have been terrific if my team plan had worked out, I said. Willie knocked some dirt off his shoes. Extremely terrific, boss. Chapter 15 I, Nate the Great, took a bone out of my pocket. Good work, Sludge, I said. You found the turkey. Sludge wagged his tail and started to eat the bone. I examined the wire fence. It had a big patch in it. The turkey must have escaped through what had been a hole in the fence. Then he came back. I turned to Sludge. Where is Claude? I asked. Sludge got up and walked to a path. I followed. Sludge put his nose in the dirt. I see, I said, turkey tracks going away and coming back, and dog tracks coming. You followed the turkey tracks here and you left dog tracks beside them. Triple tracks for Claude to follow. Very good work. But why isn't he with you? I, Nate the Great, didn't have to ask that question. I already knew the answer. Claude had lost Sludge. And Sludge knew that if he went back to look for Claude, he would mess up the tracks. If he took another path, he would leave dog tracks going away from this place. Not a good idea. So he was waiting here. Sludge started to bark and bark. 
Sludge was still on the case. Of course, I said. You are trying to tell Claude where you are. Sludge wagged his tail again. Hmm. I, Nate the Great, had an idea. Sludge, you bark and then I'll call Claude's name. That will make two loud sounds. Ready, set, go. Sludge barked and I called Claude. Now we have to go hide behind some trees, I said. Sludge and I ran into the woods. Watch for Claude, I said. We peered out from behind the trees. Nothing was happening. We waited. Then Sludge's ears perked up. We peered out again. Nothing. Suddenly we saw Claude. Claude saw the turkey. Claude jumped into the air. I found you! I found you! he yelled. I, Nate the Great, smiled. Claude was no longer a loser, at least for today. Sludge's ears perked up again. We heard voices. Olivia, with her boa dragging in the dirt, and Willie, huffing and puffing, staggered out of the woods. Chapter 16 Olivia walked up to Claude. Claude was yelling, I found the turkey! Olivia looked at the turkey. You found that turkey? She asked. Yes, I did, Claude said. You even saw me do it. Yes, I did, Olivia said. And so did Willie here. Willie nodded. Olivia wiped her face with her boa. You must be Claude, she said. And that turkey in the yard looks like a fine turkey. Nice looking. And he probably has very good manners. And is, all in all, a very wonderful turkey. Then Olivia stamped her foot and raised her voice. But he's not the turkey I've been looking for. Sludge and I stepped out of the woods. Congratulations, Claude, I said. I turned to Olivia. I've been trying to find you. I have something important to tell you. Which is? I found out that there were two missing turkeys, and Claude's is not the one you were looking for. I didn't find out until I turned on the television and saw the famous turkey. Its feathers are dark green and dark red and other colors. Claude had shown Sludge a feather from the turkey he found. It was white. Olivia picked up her boa. Just a little setback, she said, but that won't stop Olivia Sharp. See you later. Olivia turned to go. Willie followed her. Then he turned around. Good to see you and Sludge again, Mr. Great. He said. Olivia tugged at his sleeve, and they were gone. Time for us to go, 
I said to Claude. He kept looking at the turkey. This turkey belongs to somebody else, I said. However, you might be able to rent him. Check with Rosamond. Chapter 17 I dusted off my boa before I got back into the limo. Then I relaxed in the seat and sipped orange juice and ate cheese and crackers. I took off my shoes and wiggled my toes. It felt good. I was ready to resume my hunt. I needed to find that turkey. I really, really like birds. Not only do I own an owl, but I have also owned a turkey and some other feathered creatures. I definitely know turkeys well. That's why I know I'll find this one. After all, I'm a detective and I deal with a lot of secrets. But now I had to think about a turkey's secrets. Get into his mind. How much was really going on in there? I read that there are vast empty spaces in a turkey's brain. I'd also heard that there are small empty spaces in there. Nothing I couldn't handle. I settled back in my seat. Onward, Willie! Chapter 18 Sledge and I walked home. I turned on the television to check on the famous turkey. I hoped Olivia would be the one to find him, but he was still missing. A reporter was making an announcement. Anyone who has seen or knows the whereabouts of this turkey, please call 555 I turned off the television. Sludge and I went into the kitchen. I made pancakes and gave Sludge another bone. I liked having him there while I ate. I thought about the turkeys. Two turkeys missing at the same time, in the same town. Two very big turkeys missing at the same time in the same town. What seemed logical? Only one turkey was missing. That's what I had thought. That's what Olivia had thought. But sometimes, when everything seems to fit, you still have to look for what doesn't fit. In this case, it was feathers. Sludge and I finished eating. We left the kitchen. I turned the television set back on. And there was Olivia on the screen, staring me in the face. Chapter 19 Olivia was sitting on top of a limo, and the famous turkey was beside her. The turkey looked happy, stuffed, and groggy. A reporter came on the screen. A man was standing next to her. I knew that man. The reporter said, I have here Mr. Lowell from Lowell's Feed and Pet Supply Store. Mr. Lowell is it true that Olivia Sharp, presently sitting on the limo behind us, walked into your store and purchased $1,864.74 worth of turkey food?
Mr. Lowell gave a sly grin. Then he said, We never ever give out private information to anyone about our customers. Mr. Lowell looked proud. I, Nate the Great, rolled my eyes. Then the reporter turned to Olivia. And now here we have Olivia Sharp of San Francisco, who, with the help of her chauffeur, Willie, caught the turkey that has been driving this town crazy. Olivia, is it true that you rode around in this limo while you sprinkled 300 pounds of turkey food in special places that you knew would attract a turkey? And then, after only 10 minutes, you found the turkey greedily gobbling away? Olivia flipped her boa. It looked clean on television. Then she said, That is a professional secret. I used my great knowledge of birds and what they like. But I can say this. I took this turkey on as my client. I did what I knew was best for him. He was hungry and he was hiding out. That is not a good lifestyle for a turkey. Now he has a full stomach and a great future. Two hours later, Olivia knocked on my door. I opened it. Turkey hunting season is over, she said. Case closed. I looked over Olivia's shoulder. I, Nate the Great, say there are some cases that never close.